Well, hello, it's Donna here from Blind and Homesteading New Zealand. I am a podcaster. I have two podcasts. One is Blind and Knitting and one is now new Blind and Homesteading New Zealand. I am legally blind, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, have a guide dog, Kenzie, so you might see her floating around. If you've been following me on my other podcasts, you'll kind of know a little bit about me, but I have retinitis pigmentosa, which means I only have that much sight. So everything else is black. It's like just a tunnel of sight. So um, things can be quite a challenge for me, but determination and stubbornness is my game. Uh, I live in New Zealand, the lower half of the North Island and the Waitarapa. It's the middle of winter here, however it's a stunning day today, so uh, yeah, really enjoying the day. I've got all the windows open and all the doors. I've got the fire going because we need, well we do that for hot water, but also to keep the house warm it gets cold quickly. So um, yeah, this is my, one of my first, so I'm quite new at this homesteading New Zealand one. Um, I've been a person who has really enjoyed all of my life different stages of learning how to be sustainable how to save money how to cook from scratch without preservatives which are all things i'm quite passionate about but i've become passionate about them slowly so it's very much a journey so you know you can't start boom like that you've really got to sort of do this journey and in my 20s i was um, I had very low income, I was on a benefit, I had two children, I was a single parent and so I used to make my own um, products to save money like facial pro products, facial scrubs and cleaning products and things like that and it was purely to save money in those days. I really didn't have that sort of wider view of sustainability etc. Then later on in my sort of 40s I really hated, hated the thought of preservatives and, and um, uh, reading instructions. <clears throat> it was probably the time when sort of margarine was sort of pointed out. It's, it's a chemical ingredient and I really didn't like that. I really like sort of knowing that everything I put into my body, not everything, I'm not a purist. Please don't take me as a purist. Um, gosh, I love a Big Mac combo at McDonald's as, as much as anybody. Uh, and I, and we, you know, generally, live quite well um being rural helps of course but um please don't think i'm a purist but so in the yeah so back to in my 40s i was really didn't like the idea of chemicals etc so i'd already been on the journey of cleaning cleaning products and and, and um facial products so i was still pottering around with those then i started to have a wider view in life and started really thinking about sustainability it was a a video on Facebook that sort of really touched my soul, I think, uh, and it was a turtle, a big turtle that had been pulled out of the sea, and the people that pulled it out were trying to get a straw out of his nose, and it was a you know, big, long sort of McDonald's straw, and um, it, it really gutted me. I just thought, this, what are we doing? You know, what are we doing with all this plastic? And um, I'm really pleased now to see that a lot of people and a lot of agencies and it's coming from the top down as well as the bottom up but I did feel like it was a solo journey for some of us for a long time uh, we've got a long way to go but we're getting there so that was another reason why I felt I really wanted to uh, do the homesteading thing I do live rurally so I live 20 minutes out of town and being legally blind I can't drive so uh, you, you are at home when you're at home, you're at home, basically, and I have to plan my days uh, and my shopping and things around transport, etc. So I do quite like to have a store of stuff so that I don't run out. Or if I buy something and use it, I try and replace it straight away. So, um, you know, that's been a great thing. And of recent, I've really enjoyed some podcasts. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lovely New Zealand podcast, Stacey, who is... Um, what is her a farmer's wife New Zealand a farmer's wife um, and she's kind of motivated me to really get more into it and there's quite a few other podcasts that sort of do bulk cooking and my niece 
she does bulk cooking and has for a long time so once a week on a Sunday she will make most of her meals for the week um, and they're all absolutely ready to go all the veggies all of sauces all of the meat it's all you know either a crock pot or in a pan or etc um, and frozen ready for the week and or she keeps some for you know emergencies and things and so I've kind of got into that quite a bit as well and I've had frozen meals I'm not sure if you can see I'll bring it over I picked out a frozen meal from the fridge um, and to be honest I don't know what it is yes I do it is mac cheese it's macaroni cheese so it's a big thing of macaroni cheese my partner hates cheese but my family are coming for tea tonight and there are three teenagers so <laughs> that'll get hoovered up um, as well so I pulled that one out the other thing that I pulled out was a peach cobbler that um, has been in my freezer for quite some time that was made uh, bulk making and so the kids are going to have peach cobbler pudding and I don't have to worry about those two at all they're just all done all I need to do is be heated so today I'm preparing tea for my family to come out. Um, my daughter and her husband have five children between them. It's a blended family. And so there's usually a, a lot of us. And when they come out, of course, as I said, they're 11, 13 and 14. And so they eat like government mules I think is one of the podcasters sayings that I quite like um, so which is great I mean they're, they're not fussy and they'll eat most things so um, I'll, I'll cook big and whatever's left Stuart and I just live on our own so we can potter with those during the week so I thought I'd teach you some tips along the way um, some products that I have made I've done a pantry uh, tour recently on uh, YouTube so you can go back and have a look at my pantry tour get some ideas of some of the things I'll be using when they run out I'll be making them and so we'll follow that journey um, when I'm cooking I'll be using them so we'll follow that journey uh, and I also like to learn new stuff as well so uh, you know when I learn something new I'll share the love so that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing uh, of course being blind is always a challenge so there'll be a, some journey around that I'm a social worker and I have a degree in my degrees in psychology so I kind of get geeked out by the brain and so they'll I'll try and impart some tips along the way around uh, psychology I do uh, workshops as well and all sorts of things I've, I'm really lucky to have my own business well I don't have luck some luck involved but I do I work hard I do I work six days a week so some of the um, one pot meals etc are a blessing because I can just throw them in the pots. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed lately, and I guess because of my age, which is <laughs> the age, um, you know, the R word, getting close, uh, and my partner is semi-retired. Oh, I said the word. <laughs> I said the word. Ah, oh, the R word. Um, is that, uh, well, I still eat probably as much as I used to, but my partner's... Um, amount of food he eats is, is a lot less he was a you know a full-time farmer and that's a very physical hard job particularly in winter when you're out in the cold and the snow and the sleep you eat big uh, so that has changed <coughs> to his appetite and amount of food is a lot less and he also has some dietary uh, issues uh, with things that I love so he can't eat cheese pasta curry spice um, he struggles with bread i think he's dairy and gluten intolerant he says typical farm i just don't like that shit so um which is a, cha a challenge for me because i love all of that i mean i've cheese and dairy and is i love so my family are going to benefit from you know anything like that um yeah so i hope you enjoy my journey um, we'll do anything from making kefir to cooking a roast to uh, making spices and herbs. My daughter and I had a spice and herb business, so I'll, we'll talk about some flavoured salts and herbs and things all along the way. So enjoy. Right, today I am doing, I have two rolls of beef out, so we're going to do roll beef roast. Um, they don't need a lot of 
zhuzhing because the meat itself is just so beautiful you really don't want to so a bit of sugar a bit of salt i should say a flavored salt i've got a flavored salt here that i made recently that uh, my partner and i really love it is um if you can see that it is uh, what is it got in it it's got garlic powder uh, onion powder white pepper salt just ordinary iodized salt you know table salt um i think it's got cumin in it um yeah and a few other things i'll keep that as a surprise because when we run out i'll make another one um i do have it written down i have a recipe for it so that is really yummy and so we will um learn about that excuse me someone's trying to ring me and i'm just going to get rid of them um right so where do i start this is all new to me so i'm going to make scallop potatoes and um, stuart won't eat those so i'm going to keep a couple of spuds out and cook those separately for him but i figured things like scallop potatoes and that are great for teenagers because you know they're full of protein and and rich and so they can fill up as much as they like and um, they can have macaroni cheese and scallop potatoes as their sort of uh, carbs and they need carbs uh, got two cabbages that I've pulled out of my garden these little mini cabbages um, they're quite cute they're very good size actually I quite like this size um, I have quite success I've had quite a bit of success with these the one thing I've noticed with these mini ones is they do not store well you kind of have to eat them straight away they go soft very quickly not sure why but they do um, whereas a big cabbage will, uh, will store well uh, just recently somebody was on um, Facebook Marketplace, which is, I think you will probably know what that is, was selling t um, carrots for $20 for 20 kilos, it was $24 for 20 kilos, so I bought 20 kilos of carrots, Stuart thought I was mad, but I gave a whole lot to my daughter, I gave a whole lot to my granddaughter who's expecting, so I want her to have some healthy foods and I remember being in my 20s and married and on a low income, it's not easy. So I'm at the other stage of life where I can kind of help them a bit. So 20 kilos of carrots. So we are having some carrots tonight. I prep all my veggies at the beginning of the week, put them in a bag, take the air out. And um, I learned a tip on Facebook the other day and put a handy towel in there. And by golly, they stay fresh for such a long time with the air out of them, I think is the key, and taking the dampness away with the handy towel. So they will stay weeks and weeks in the fridge. And when they start, or I've just had enough of them, I'll throw this bag in the fridge and then it's ready for a soup or a casserole, a freezer I should say, but it'll get eaten. So we're going to have carrots tonight. I don't know if it's enough, so I've got a little bag of um, carrot sticks that I've made for when I make my homemade cheese and chilli sauce, but I'll use those as well just to fill the pot because, as I say, lots of teenagers and lots of men and lots of mouths to feed tonight. So that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> the scallop potatoes is a mix that I have made. Now I've got to be honest and say I've not never tried this. I got the recipe off online uh, and I thought, oh, that sounds yummy. So I'll give that a try. So we're going to try that today. Now it's a very similar recipe to another one that I've made before, Alfredo sauce. Now I love the Alfredo sauce. So I figured this is very similar. So I'm pr pretty sure I'm going to like it. Um, yeah, so we're going to make that up. So it is, there's all sorts of things in there, past, dried parsley, dried um, chives, um, milk powder, corn flour, all sorts of things, thickening, everything's in there, salt, pepper. So all I need to do is supposedly add half a cup of this mix, two tablespoons of butter, and I've got homemade butter that I've made, I made the other day that I can use, and two and three quarter cups of boiling water. So, and then mix it all together. So that is what we're going to try today. Um, oh, boiling water. See, I was going to add milk, and I was going to make milk with some milk powder, so I didn't use my good, um, I, a friend of mine's got a house cow, so I've got raw milk, so I didn't want to use my good raw milk on it, but boiling water. So, so we'll make that up, <clears throat> see what that's like. It'll get eaten anyway. I'm sure the kids will eat it. There's never any waste here, because I've got chooks, and we've got farm dogs that will hoover anything up. I've got compost bins. I have worms. They're not doing so well, but it is winter. They'll, they'll flourish again, um, hopefully, in the summer. 
So I need a, to make up that sauce, I need to put the jug on. Um, put the jug on and get a jug. And so it is, I wonder if I should double it. Um, I might double it. So I have, what I did yesterday, as I was sitting down, it was pretty miserable, it was raining, so I peeled all the spuds yesterday. So I'm just going to rinse those off. I better make sure I remember to put some aside for Stuart so that he's got some to eat because that's not fair really if, if he... Um, yeah, it doesn't get a spud. <laughs> uh, right, so I'm going to double it. So it says quarter of, uh, it says half a cup. So we'll put a cup of mix in it. I hope you can see. You probably can't see much. What I'll do is I will, while I'm doing the things down here, I'll move you down, which means you don't see my face, which is probably a good thing. Can you see that? Yes. I'll just move you. You know what I've done? I've dallied this up with rubber bands. Real typical Kiwi, Anna. So a cup of the mix. Smells lovely. Smells very, hmm, garlic and onion. Cup of mix. Put that aside to put away. Out of the way. I've already made mess. This is the blind thing. Um, I can put things in a bowl and I miss the bowl completely and end up putting them on the bench. <laughs> I have dished a meal, put the plate on the table, put the spuds on the, on the plate to discover that I'd actually put the spuds on the bench, not even on the plate. So <laughs> there we go. I'll get rid of that because I don't need that anymore. And the jug has just boiled, so I'll bring that over and the homemade butter so let's see let's see how we go so homemade butter i made this last weekend um out of raw milk so it's so easy so quick because golly wally butter is expensive right what else does it say on the jar which i've put away dum dum Two tablespoons, which is, so it'll need to be four tablespoons, which is, that's probably two tablespoons. Three, four, that's four. Um, shall we make it, see this is, the difference between cooking and baking is, um, I'll put that in the dishwasher out of the way, is um, with cooking, you can add lib a bit, you can throw stuff in and try things out. With baking, baking's quite a science, so you've really got to be quite, um, you know, careful with that. And now to, and, oh my gosh, my memory, two and three quarters, so that is four, five, five and a half cups, that's a lot, isn't it? So I'm not going to be able to fit all that in there, so we'll see how we go, one, Two, definitely not going to be able to fit that all in there. Three, I wonder if I need a bigger, a bigger bowl. Oh, here we go, can get this one, eh? Give it a rinse out. It's only had water in it, and spuds, it's not had anything, the spuds are going in it anyway. So we better try again, huh? You'll watch. I'll spill something soon, or break it, or, I'm really good at those, I, and I pay a cleaner, and it sounds really decadent, and I don't do it because of decadence at all, I do it because I keep breaking things, and um, I've got precious stuff in my, oh, that smells good, precious stuff in my uh, cabinets, and every time I dusted, I would break something. And every time I would clean the bathroom, I would break something. So that's another two. Let's see. 
Let's see how we go with that. I'll get a whip. Whisk. Which is probably in the wash, so it'll just have to be a spoon. It smells lovely. It smells sort of quite um, oniony. I can smell lots of onion. I can smell the parsley. And I can smell um, uh, garlic. And now it smells creamy as well. Yeah, I think that might be okay. I'll have to try it and see if it's got enough salt in it. So I'll just stir it till this butter starts melting a bit. And then what I need to do is slice the... Oh, my hair! My mother would shoot me! I've still got my hair down. I'm going to... I'm, re I'm really fussy about that, only because I was lectured and lectured and lectured. So I've got a rub tie here. And excuse me, I'm going to go and tie my hair up. My mother was a, a cook in a... Um, she worked in pubs and bars. My dad owned a pub. And so mum used to do the cooking in the restaurant. And so she was an excellent cook. And then she... Got a job in the laundry at a school, but in the holiday she would work in the school kitchen. And so, uh, yeah, we were drilled about hygiene and hair and all of those sorts of things. Hey, that looks really nice. I might get... Sorry. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> I might... Oh, where my whiskers... My whiskers disappear. It'll be somewhere. It might even be in the dishwasher. Come on. Come on. Okay, so that's done. I'll leave that to sit there and put that in the dishwasher. Oops. And let's get the potatoes sliced up and then we can put it all together. I thought I would add some onions so I've got a couple of onions <laughs> it's just about but that's okay it still works it'll still do the job and they're quite small onions so um, we'll go with two for now but we'll see how we go now I've got my bin which is my compost bin oh this is a sharp knife <laughs> new knife I've got to be very careful story about this I'm I'll show you the came in a lovely wooden box, which I'm quite chuffed about. I needed a new sharp knife. Um, my son is a chef, and so I messaged him and said, look, Mummy's just bought, uh, and he laughed at me, and I said, why are you laughing? And he said, it's the um, one that everybody in the chefing world takes the mickey out of chefs that have that one. <laughs> It's very, very sharp, so I better be very careful. Um, that's great. I love a sh good sharp knife. You actually have less chance of cutting yourself with a good sharp knife than you do with a um, blunt knife. So, uh, I shouted myself, because I had a very good knife, but it just keeps getting blunt. Um, you never, ever wash your knives in hot water. Uh, in, in the dishwasher especially or in the sink with hot water um, that really bluntens them so just taking the skin off these onions um, actually they don't, they're quite small so I think I might do that third one um, as I say I used to make oak hill potatoes and potato a la gratin a la gratin, gratin potatoes, quite a bit, but I haven't made them for years because Stuart doesn't, as I say, like things like that. So, um, so it's a novelty for me to make it, and I haven't, you know, when you make something quite a bit and you kind of can throw it all together real quick and you, you know your ingredients, well, because I haven't made this for such a long time. I don't know my sort of amounts that I'm going to need. I'll just cut two for now um, of these. 
Right, oh, I do like that knife. By golly, that could be quite lethal, quite dangerous. So now we need to start layering with some potatoes. Um, I'm just going to slice them like this. Oh yeah, I think I could like this knife very muchly. You don't want it too, too thin. You don't want it paper thin. And then you just, oh, you're going to give that a spray with some oil um, over here. You probably don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's just so things don't stick. Um, I buy oil in bulk as well. So, onion skin. Right, so you can lay those down like that. So, I'm just going to keep going like this for now. What I might do is pause you. Oh, stuck to it. Pause you and we'll come back when I am getting through it. Hello, I'm back. Um, I'll just move you up here. So I have, I'll bring you to my face soon. I've layered potato and the onions. It's quite a bit in there. Um, you could be very fussy and layer them. I'll just bring you up and layer them um, all nice and neatly. I'm not going to do that. It's just not in me. It's not my, not me. So, um, yeah, all I've done is sort of semi, I've layered them, but I've laid, so I did a layer of potato and then I threw a whole lot of onion in, layer, layer of potato, onion, layer and potato. So potato and potato at the top and bottom, onions in the middle. Um, so now I'm going to taste this um, mix to see if it needs anything. So let's see. Mm. It's got a little bit of a background heat. It's probably the garlic powder and the onion powder. It needs a bit of salt, and I think the potatoes will need salt. So let's put some salt, and I'm going to use my flavoured salt on the spuds. So, da, 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 da. That's a lot of potato in there. So this has got paprika in it and all sorts. And I think we'll put some in the sauce as well. Um, one of my grandchildren is not particularly fussed on pepper. So I'm not going to put uh, ground pepper. I love ground pepper. But I can always add it afterwards. So let's see if that has made a difference. Get my tasting spoon. That is nice. like it. So I'm going to pour that. I'll put you down so you can see that bit happening. Oh, it's not very good putting my hand like that, is it? Let's put you down like that so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pour this into the potatoes. I've turned my oven on too because what I'm going to do is cook it beforehand. I am pleased I doubled this. And oh, make sure I'm getting it in the dish. Because, <laughs> as I said, terrible habit of not getting things. So I'll get my, my scraper out so that I can get it all. Oh, don't want to waste any of it. Oh, that's quite nice. It does need pepper, but I'm, as I say, one of the grandies doesn't like it. So we will add that at the end. Right. Squish it down a wee bit. Give it a squish down. Hmm, be interested to see how this is going to play out. It would be really nice with some mushrooms in it. But some of the grandies don't, again, don't like mushrooms, so I won't do that. But I'm just thinking I could put mushrooms in there, or because um, I've got dehydrated mushrooms, and um, it would be really nice with some ham or some bacon in it. But we're just going to keep it quite simple because I haven't tried this flavour before. So, 
rid of that tasting spoon. I can get another one over. My knife, my new knife is very sharp and I like it, but the potatoes stuck to it really bad. You have to slide them off. So I was going to bring get my other knife out to give it a try um, and see whether it was the knife or the potatoes, but I never did. I just got the job done. I'll just have a wipe up here so that we're all clean again. I spent, <laughs> this is the blind thing, I spent a good 10 minutes trying to find my ruddy dishcloth. I'm going to, I usually crochet my own and they're all out. I bleached them all so they're out in the wash today. So I've just got a, an old Chuck's one there, um, which is clean. But um, I'm going to shout myself some bright fluoro cotton yarn so that I can crochet some really bright ones because the ones I crocheted are all cream and sort of fawn caramelly colour so and they actually look dirty they're not dirty but they look dirty so it's a colour I regret doing so yeah I need to um, crochet some more um, a couple of my friends dear friends gave me uh, to both two of them knit dishcloths so they both gave me one each um, I've still got those they're great uh, yeah so uh, because you, again you want sort of natural cotton if you can and, and it's a skill uh, crocheting them is just a nice little skill to learn and you can just whip them up you know I can knit, I can crochet one in a night uh, you can knit them too um, I just crochet them because crocheting is something I like doing but it's not a lot of things that I like to crochet you know it's there's not knitting is there's more things to do anyway so that is ready I think what I'll do is cover it in glad tin foil so put some foil around over it for the first, um, maybe for the first, so I can take quite a while to cook, I'm going to say it's going to take an hour, so I might put this on for the first 40 minutes, um, or so, and then I will take it off, and I haven't got any cheese, so I can't even put any cheese on the top to, to make it nice and, you know, a little cheesy, but, oh, I know what I do have. I've got some homemade, um, it's chicken stuffing, um, just dehydrated, oh, not dehydrated, um, stale bread that I uh, crushed up and dried in the oven, actually, and it's full of mixed herbs and stuff. That would make a really nice topping. Hmm. So I might sprinkle some of that on near the end. Seems I don't have any uh, cheese. So I'm going to put that in the oven now to cook. Get that done. Bum, 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 bum. Well, it's heavy, so it's obviously a solid amount of food. Right. I put that on, and because I'm blind, I just feel with my fingers. I've put that on about 190, 200. Might be a bit high, but potatoes, you know, that's, there's quite a bit of food in there, so we want to get through it cook and the spuds aren't um, cooked. I could have pre-cooked them I suppose, that would have been another good idea. Right, so the next step is the carrots which are all prepped, so <laughs> this is the, an advantage of prepping these beforehand. They goes in the compost, so it will compost beautifully, you need a little bit of paper in your compost. And so there's the carrots, do I need that second bag? Yes, I think I do. I'd rather have too many than not enough, and I can um, can't reuse that one unfortunately, but it has been used before, so it's done well. Compost, um, and that one can definitely reuse. So we wash our plastic bags and reuse them, so that one will get washed and reused. Right, so carrots are in and done. That's so nice not having to prep them. Later on tonight, all I have to do is cook the meat, and Stuart loves to carve the meat, so I don't even have to do that. I will make, oh, that's right, I've got, I've got the meat sitting on the oven. Oh, um, I will make some gravy. So all my veggies will be done. The potato dish will be hot and just need heating through. All I have to do is make a gravy, and I have made a homemade gravy mix that I use. Um, 
which is good for sort of when it's a big family like this because you can make as much or as little as you want and I'll add some of the juice in fact what I'll do is I'll make it in the roasting pan that the beef will be roasted in pick up all those flavours in the bottom could even throw a little bit of red wine and something different um, yes yeah, so I'm just going to whip up these carrots uh, not the carrots we've done the carrots these cabbages to um, they have been washed although I use all natural stuff in the garden so they don't need for washing like a supermarket one now blind can you point out where the other cabbages for me guys can you see it I have lost a cabbage this is what I spend half my time doing when I thought just finding things that I've lost here's my two carrots and there's potatoes which are going in a pot for Stuart oh come on oh. <laughs> da, da, da. Should have got Kenzie to find it. She's very good at finding things on the floor for me. She heard her name. <laughs> She's come over. Yes, Mum. Can I help you? Right. That leaf, that top leaf is not looking pretty very green, so we might just take that one off. Give it a wash. It's a nice solid one, this one, but that one's a bit sort of open but anyway it'll, it will be fine it's, oh yes so they're quite open too and I think that's maybe that's why they don't stay fresh very long because they're quite open and not sort of tight like a, a solid like a big cabbage um so oh this knife is very good and it's not sticking now like the like the potatoes, did it may have just been because it was potato. Um, I, I was wondering whether it was the style of knife, you know, because they've got a shape along there, whether it was that or not. I'm going to steam these, so I'm just potting them in a steamer to um, Stuart and I when we're on our, when we're on our own. They usually cook it in the microwave and I like to sprinkle green um, green herb stock. Where's the camera? Oh, that's me being blind again looking for the camera. See, you'll find out all these things now. Um, green herb stock and knob, knobs of butter and that's really super yummy. Just a couple of tablespoons of water, sprinkle with green, green herb stock, stock and um, we could use veggie stock I suppose but we like the green herb one. Um, and a bit of salt and pepper and some knobs of butter bish bang boom, five minutes There's your, the cabbage done beautifully in the microwave so um, oh the, the chooks are going to oh yes they're very open aren't they chooks are going to love these bits and pieces left over veggie bits they did get a couple of there was a couple of cabbages that had not really done well they were just basically open loose leaves so threw those out to the chooks um the other day i'm not sure if i trust this knife because it's quite sharp <laughs> well not sure if i trust me with this knife so there's my tea towel so here's me looking again for I usually wear a pinny. I haven't, I've only got one apron. It's in the wash. So I need to get myself some more aprons because aprons are so handy. You know, I do tend to be a wipe, wipe on my clothes person. Right, so I'm going to use this flavoured salt again because it's super yummy and that will be lovely on cabbage. Right. Did I salt the carrots? I didn't, did I? I'll salt the carrots, but I'm just going to use ordinary old salt for those. Where are they? Oh, there they are. So, quite a lot of carrots. Carrots do absorb um, a lot of salt. They absorb salt really well, so you probably need to put less carrots in your... Uh, less carrots, uh, less salt in your carrots. So, that is carrots cabbage 
uh, scallop potatoes, some potatoes in a pot for Stuart, I'll grab a pot. We've got cupboards, We've got new cupboards, but we haven't had the handles put on them yet. Actually, shall I cook all of those? I'll get a bigger pot and I'll cook all the leftovers because the one thing Stuart does enjoy is a cooked breakfast every morning. And so, whatever potatoes are left, he will fry up for his breakfast. Oh, see how that knife, oh gosh, it does stick. I'm going to get my good old one out and see if it's the knife. But that is jolly annoying. Right. Oh no, see, it's stuck as well. So it is definitely not the knife, it is the potatoes. Quite good peeling news yesterday while I was just sitting watching podcasts. It worked out quite well. Sometimes I can do intelligent things. I work six days a week, not full days. Um, so I finish at three... Uh, on Monday I do a full day, I finish at 5, Tuesday I finish at 3, sometimes 4 depending on what's happening, and um, I won't cut them too much smaller because then you won't be able to fry the leftovers, and finish at 3 on a Wednesday, Thursday, and then I work from home on Friday, Saturday, and that tends to be sort of 1 o'clock or 11 o'clock, depending on my day. 1 o'clock or 11 o'clock until 4. So Sunday is my only day, and it's a little precious. You know, you can understand that, I suppose. But it gets filled very quickly. I've got chooks to look after. And... Um, chips to look after and you know you've got washing and everything to do I try and do the washing on the mornings that I have a later morning which is the Thursday uh, the Friday and the Saturday and but that my friends and my roast two roasts are sitting there they'll be nice and simple just a little bit of water drizzled in the pan salt and pepper and I'd say about an hour for medium rare, 55 minutes to an hour. They're quite big. Normally I'd say 45 to 55, but I'm going to say an hour because they're quite big. And kids often don't like medium rare, do they? So they're ready to go. Got macaroni cheese there as an extra. Oak Hill potatoes or scallop potatoes. My veggies are done. I wonder if I should just make my gravy. No, I was going to make that in the pan, wasn't I? And I think that'll make some nice flavours. And I've got peach cobbler there. And I've got cream from the cow up the road. What more could you ask for? Um, now that was, the so the beef is our own beef. We raised the beef. I'm going to move you back up again. One of the things that Stuart and I really love is that we um, have a small footprint so the beef we raised ourselves, uh, and that basically went from paddock to freezer. In fact, it did because we had a guy who had a um, killing truck at the time, which was about three or four years ago. That beef done us well. That cattle beef it was a whole cattle beef. Um, we had to buy another freezer. We've got three freezers. We had to buy another freezer to fit it all in, and we've only got a few topside roasts left, I think, now and um, for the months. So that's, that's four years for one cattle beast, for just the two of us and, and the occasional uh, meal. Uh, and of course we can get our own lamb. We don't have it very often because um, we're sheep farmers, but we don't have our own lamb very often because we really want to. Is that a bit bright on you? Is that better? We really want to um, sell them. We, we want to make money from them. So <laughs> we do eat the occasional one. I've got a hobby stud of my own, a hobby mob. My sister-in-law and I have a, a little mob of sheep of our own. We just enjoy doing it. It's purely a hobby. We've got 30, I think, now all together, and we call it the she sheep. Um, we pay Stuart grazing, and we have to pay when they get shorn, but if there's any lambs to sell, we um, 
not that we're making any money on them at the moment because the, the market for sheep is terrible but um yeah so sheep um we've got lots of hunters around us Stuart's not a hunter but we've got lots of hunters around us so he helped at a wedding now that recently and was given a whole venison so we've got venny in there um, and we've had some sausages made and some patties made we are truly blessed our freezers are full in fact my daughter said if there was a natural disaster she'd come straight here because you could live for <laughs> i really want to i try and have enough food in the house i'd like a year's worth but if, at least for a couple of months because if we ever got stuck we've only got one road in and out if we've got stuck we you know we have to be uh, self-sufficient so we've got our own veggie garden we've got our own eggs we've got three freezers of meat and um yeah, I've got a fabulous pantry, which I'm blessed with. Uh, I watch quite a few Amish and Mennonite podcasts because I do like their philosophy and values around food. And that's very much that cooking from scratch, having a store for a year. They, they, they always work to have a one year store of food. And so they have one year and then they, you know, the next year. So they rotate it. So it's not that doomsday prepping stuff, but it is definitely... If something happens you know you know that you're going to be okay for a while but i like it just for saving money cooking from scratch buying bulk is cheaper if you want to buy bulk and start buying bulk get a couple of girlfriends together and all put in and start that way it's a journey and you can't do it all at once so just be kind on yourself start really slowly with one or two things you know i've been doing this for a long time so my pantry's um you know pretty good um and even then i don't succeed in some things but tea is ready i'm going to look forward to that it's nice and easy uh, and you know it's good sustaining wholesome food carrots and cabbage and just good old-fashioned food so i hope you enjoyed that and we'll look forward to hearing from you next time i will let you know what the verdict on the scalloped um, potato mix was and um, then I can if it's any good I can share the recipe with you because it's my own recipe I've just mixed and mashed things to my own um, so I can share that it's not a published recipe and yeah you can try it yourself anyway have a great week I'll catch up with you next time bye from now from Donna <laughs>